Hey there, once again, YouTube. I am back once again. Before I start, um, please check out my website if you haven't already. Bookmark it if you want. There's a link in the description box below right under my email address. My website can teach you how to download, how to access, how to find all the seismic data you need and GPS data as well. How to read all the different types of seismic plots and charts that people use. And it contains thousands of plots that I generated myself pertaining to a great many earthquakes, forms, and events. So, again, link is in the description box right under my email address. Go check that out if you want. In this video, I want to take a look at some recent seismic activity. Here we see the world. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Okay. Here we see the world. It seems like seismic activity is pretty calm right now in the world. Not many earthquakes over here are being reported. I think the largest in the past 24 hours was this one, a 5.2 supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth in Fiji. Don't want to talk about that though. Let's go to Hawaii. All right, here we are in Hawaii, if my computer will let me. Notice how there's an earthquake all the way up here. Look at that. We usually do not see earthquakes up in this location right here. And here is ever since January 1st, 2017 to right now, May 24th, 2019. Seismicity for this location here up north, uh, north of the big island of Hawaii. Here's today's event right here. We see only 32 reported events. Might be a little bit more than that, just tiny, but usually this area does not see too much seismicity. So it isn't too noteworthy because the last one was a 3.0 on February 24th, 2019, and then another one on February 3rd, same year. And they usually are pretty deep up in this location. So we'll take a look at that seismic data in just a second, but let's go back. Let's take a look at that in just a second. Notice we have multiple earthquakes across the big island of Hawaii. One little tiny one up here near, that's some, Mauna Kea is right here. So it's somewhat near Mauna Kea, 1.7 and negative 0.7 kilometers in depth. And then one over here all the way to the east, a magnitude 2.6 at a deep 41.5 kilometers in depth. Very deep right there. Very interesting. And then we did have another episode of spasmodic tremor. You may be asking me, what in the living hell is spasmodic tremor? Well, remember the DOPHFEs, the Deep Long Period High Frequency Events, as I used to call them. Apparently on my Facebook, uh, not my group, but the Facebook group that I joined, uh, the Earthquake Watcher group, where there's a lot of professionals involved in that group, like John Vidal and Jackie. I forget her last name again. Sorry, it's kind of hard to pronounce. Um, but they are professionals. Professional seismologists are involved in that Facebook group. And we did talk a little bit. And apparently, my name is incorrect because it's already been named. I didn't know that. It has been seen in other volcanoes worldwide just a few times. It's somewhat of a rare event. And it is called spasmodic tremor. Isn't that interesting? Spasmodic tremor. And we do have two reported events, part of the spasmodic tremor sequence earlier today. At magnitude 2.3 and 38.8 kilometers in depth. They are not reporting it as quote unquote other event, but the USGS usually reports them as other event because they cannot be construed as normal earthquakes. Here, let me go to seven days, all magnitudes, past seven days. Notice these diamonds right here. Actually, Loihi, which is a volcano offshore, did have two earthquakes actually. 10.3 kilometers in depth, there was a magnitude 1.8, and then a magnitude 1.8 at 11.6 kilometers in depth. A little bit of earthquakes going on in Loihi, not too much. Majority of seismicity remains along Mauna Loa and a little bit of the southwest rift zone right here. Kilauea in the south flank regions. Surprisingly, where the uplift is phenomenal in this area, we still see barely any seismicity. How is that possible? GPS station Joka is showing a good amount of uplift in this region right here. It seems the closer you get to the lower east rift zone, the greater the uplift is. I am unsure why seismicity is so low for this area if uplift is so high. I don't know. It's very, very strange. Very strange. But we see these diamonds down here. Notice these diamonds report as other event. Other event. From now on, I am not calling them DOPHFEs anymore because I'm going to use them by their proper term, spasmodic tremor. For the rest of my research, when I refer to spasmodic tremor, I am referring to those DOPHFE events. So, Let's get this started. We did have a few today. Let's go to Mauna Loa monitoring just real quick. Let's go to PLAD, far from the epicenter. We can still see. Now, Now look at this. This is the spasmodic tremor episode that we saw the other day that I did do a post on under Seismic Events menu under the Hawaii blog page. And then look at today. We did have two more. We had one right here and another one right here. And we will take a look at that seismic data in just a second. Let's get closer to PPLD, shall we? For some reason, PLAD picks these up a lot better than PPLD, which is strange. 
Notice, oh, that's 48 hours. My bad. Let's go back to monitoring station. Let's go to the past 12 hours. We do see one right there. And another little teeny tiny one right there. But again, PLAD on Mauna Loa is showing these events much stronger. And here's the most recent one right there. So we are seeing more spasmodic tremor, which is related to the influx of magma into the reservoir of either... I don't know where the magma is going, though, because we, we pretty, it's pretty much unanimous that these spasmodic tremor events at these depths are signaling mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit, feeding magma into Mauna Loa and the middle and lower east rift zones. I still believe that Kilauea is not seeing a resurgence of magma. Personally, I think the magma chamber has collapsed in, in on itself a long time ago during the eruptions, so it is possible Kilauea is dying. If that is true, then major eruptions, I don't know when, but later on in the future, major eruptions will occur along the middle and lower east rift zones, where magma seems to be pooling a lot more than even at Kilauea. So Kilauea might be dead, guys, but that doesn't mean volcanic activity is over. Actually, it means quite the opposite. Volcanic activity, if that's true, if that's true that Kilauea is dying, volcanic activity will skyrocket one of these days and sometime in the future, I don't know when, and it'll be pretty bad down in this location here. And I think also some of the magma might be pushing towards Mauna Loa. It's my theory that the spasmodic tremor events, again, are signaling magma transport along the Mantapun conduit. We already know that. But why are we seeing uplift bo at both at Mauna Loa and the middle and lower east rift zones? But Kilauea barely is seeing any uplift, if any at all. So I thought that's very interesting. So we did have more of those spasmodic tremor events. So let's take a look at the most recent events, shall we? Let's do one day all magnitude. So this is what I'm going to look at. We're first going to take a look at this event right here, which was a magnitude 3.1 at 27.3 kilometers in depth on May 24, 2019 at 1316 UTC. Only one person reported feeling this event. I'm surprised anybody felt it at all. I mean, for a 3.1 at that depth, that's interesting that anybody felt it, but it's still possible. It's still possible. Let's go to origin and see the closest seismic station to this event. Go to phases. Okay, that's interesting. No phase information available. No magnitude information available. That doesn't make much sense. So whenever you cannot find the closest seismic station to uh, or shown on the phases or magnitudes list, you can always come here to the Iris G map and use a location box and make sure all the parameters up here are empty. Just do a location box around the location you want. Press update map and the stations will load. From what I have seen right here, let's see, is this closer? This might be closer. Let's see, which one is closer? This one, because the earthquake occurred right in this location right here, which would be right here. So I'm guessing this station would be closest. KPA in the PT network. Let's see, dash dash HNZ. I really don't want to use a strong motion station, so let's just use this station right here. Still pretty close, so we should get a good look. KHLH in the PT network, no location code given, but I'm going to use broadband vertical BHG. Let's check out that data right now for this earthquake. So here we are in the seismic program swarm. Let's see, I had to use, I had to use HHZ instead of BHG because the BHG channel was not working for some weird reason. I don't know why the earthquake map's not working. Come on, buddy. Okay, so this occurred on the 24th at 1316 UTC. So 1316, let's see, where's 1316? 1316 is right here. Okay, here it is. Doesn't appear to be any type of tremor. Looks like a normal earthquake. Let's check it out. Very interesting earthquake. Strong P waves. Usually the, from what I've seen, usually S waves are a little bit stronger than P waves, but the P waves are pretty strong. And a downwards going P waves showing dilatation. Again, I do not exactly know what dilatation means. Still trying to learn about all that, but I do know a downwards going P wave on any station shows dilatation, not compression. Compression would show an upwards going P wave when dealing with a vertical channel. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the spectrogram, shall we? Normal high range frequencies. Maybe just a normal tectonic event. Maybe a little bit of stress being relieved in that area. Check out the dominant frequencies, shall we? Mm, dominant high frequencies. Normal high frequency tectonic event. In my opinion, just one. Just 3.1. Now. Let's move on to today's episode of Spasmodic Tremor that occurred down here near Pahala. Again, the epicenters usually are almost always in this location, and they usually occur anywhere from 20 kilometers in depth all the way to 50 kilometers in depth. However, sometimes I have seen some of the quote-unquote other events reportedly 53 kilometers in depth, even up to 56 kilometers in depth. Pretty deep for any type of Spasmodic Tremor episode. 
We're going to take a look at that now, but I want to show you some examples. Here's an example of spasmodic tremor from ResearchGate. There really is not here. Let me zoom in. Now, this one is from ResearchGate. Again, on the, my Facebook group, the Earthquake Watcher group that I joined, with, uh, they do have some professional seismologists in there. They did say that this is more along the lines of spasmodic tremor, and it looks exactly the same. Look at the spectrogram plot. Notice the frequencies seem to be somewhat similar. They're a little bit higher than what we're seeing in Hawaii here, but they are pretty much exactly the same. Look, that looks just like those DLP HFEs, right? Well, I'm not calling them DLP HFEs anymore because I have confirmed they are called spasmodic tremor. Example of a seismogram and spectrogram of a spasmodic tremor episode recorded a few minutes after the cigar-shaped event of figure six. Don't know where figure six went. I don't know where figure six went. Oh, well. But yeah, this is spasmodic tremor. This was from ResearchGate figure seven. And this was not generated by myself, guys. But you can tell the characteristics are almost identical, almost exactly the same as the events that we are seeing in Hawaii. Now let's go over to the next example of spasmodic tremor. Here's another example, again, from ResearchGate. Notice we have a seismogram, spectrogram, and spectra plot. But you can tell these have lower frequencies. These, This basically does look like the ones that we are seeing in Hawaii. But again, if you find spasmodic tremor in other places of the world, they, they are probably going to look a little bit different because there's no such thing as an exact seismic event for all locations of the world. I mean, characteristics can change due to bedrock, soil type, and how the seismic waves propagated to the station. But it's very interesting to note that these have been seen before in other locations of the world, but I still believe spasmodic tremor is somewhat of a rare event. It's kind of rare, guys. We see mid-range frequencies, and these look very identical to the ones occurring in Hawaii, except this one, come on, buddy, this one looks a lot more similar to the ones in Hawaii. Very, very interesting. Very, very cool. So keep this in mind. Keep this in mind for the analysis that we're about to conduct. We're going to take a look at some of the characteristics of today's spasmodic tremor episodes under Hawaii, which they're reporting two events for. They're first reporting a 2.3, 38.8 kilometers in depth. This might change later on after they do uh, additional analysis. 2.1 and 34.1 kilometers in depth. I believe there are two spasmodic tremor episodes today. What was it, May? Ugh. Was it May 19th that we saw nine in one day? I think it was May 19th. Forgive me if I'm wrong. I did an analysis page on this on my website. Actually, why don't you go check that out right now? Okay, my bad. I was wrong. It was not May 19th. It was May 15th that we saw nine DLP HFEs, which they're no longer called that. They're now going to be called spasmodic tremor. So for the remainder of my videos and my research on my website, whenever you see me refer to spasmodic tremor in Hawaii, I am referring to those DOP HFEs. Going down, this was on May 15th. Remember, we saw nine of them. They are occurring within the Mantaplume conduit, most likely signaling mass magma transport. All of this is not surface noise that you are seeing, guys. Not surface noise, otherwise it would not correlate on stations miles and miles away. These are spasmodic tremor episodes. The strongest one of May 15th was this one right here. Let's look at the characteristics of the May 15th spasmodic tremor episode, the strongest one. Okay, look at that. Oh, whoopsie. Let's go back. Look at that. And then let's go back to here. And then let's go back to here. And then go back to here. It is very, very similar, isn't it? Let's go to the closest seismic station. Notice that? Notice that. Yep, spasmodic tremor for sure. The characteristics are identical, identical. So we know these are spasmodic tremor. I've always wondered, because I heard people talking about spasmodic tremor a while ago, and I always wondered what that was. Now for the spasmodic tremor episodes today, I am going to use station PLAD, which is on Mauna Loa Summit. We can see right here, here's Mauna Loa Summit. Actually, it's just to the northeast, the east-northeast of Mauna Loa Summit. PLAD usually shows these events much stronger than PPLD, which is strange because PPLD usually shows a higher amplitude count, but on PLAD it shows much better, sometimes. I don't know, it's very odd. It's very, very odd. Past 12 hours, again, we see spasmodic tremor occurring right there, and then we add another small episode of spasmodic tremor right here, showing mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit. Let's take a look at that data from PLAD right now. 
Actually, we're going to look at PPLD first. I actually do want to look with the, uh, look at the spasmodic tremor events with the closest seismic station possible. And then we'll go to PLAD just so you can see these events. I have to say, only going to about 100 amplitude count, 150 at the max, maybe 200 at the max. There is some type of strange background tremor that has been going off and on, off and on. And it is being detected on multiple seismic stations. Notice 50 amplitude count, 100 amplitude count, and then it increases right down here. Let's go to the spectrogram. I'm not saying this is harmonic volcanic tremor. I actually thought this was normal oceanic microseisms, which are possible and can be. Usually they're only shown on broadband stations, but they can sometimes appear on short period stations as well. Notice this is why I thought they were microseisms. Notice the low frequency range starting at about 0.4 hertz and ending right at about 2 hertz. So I thought that was a little bit too low, but the broad range of frequencies has me a little puzzled. And notice it does kind of look like some type of background tremor. But just to, to get rid of that, let's do a 0 0.9 hertz high pass filter to the eighth power. Notice the background tremor is still there. In my opinion, it does look like a very weak harmonic volcanic tremor. Very odd. I don't know for sure though. Please do not hold me accountable to that. Because I'm still not a professional, guys. I still need to go to school for this stuff. But it seems the lower frequency band was a little bit stronger than the frequencies around 1.5 to 2 hertz. Because we see it up to about 60 amplitude count now that I have added the filter. But it still almost goes up to 100 amplitude count. So there does seem to be some type of background tremor occurring. But it is possible those are just regular oceanic microseisms. That's possible. Now, going down to spasmodic tremor. The two spasmodic tremor episodes will be shown here. Let me zoom all the way out because they last a long time. Let's go to the spectrogram, shall we? Notice how the background activity, either the oceanic microseisms or the harmonic volcanic tremor or whatever the background tremor or vibration is, seems to be stronger than this event right here. So why don't we add a filter, shall we? Let's filter out this background activity. Let's do a 2.8 hertz high pass filter. Let's add 2.8. Press OK. OK. All right. That drew it out just a little bit more. Now we see this is a typical spasmodic tremor episode, but the ones in Hawaii seem to be very weird. Sometimes they seem to be just tremor with only a tiny little bit of earthquakes. And other times they look like this where there are multiple earthquakes over and over and over and over and over again. So the spasmodic tremor is not... The characteristics are not singular. You know what I mean? So it, they can always look different. They can always look very, very different. And let's go down here. And we do see another one right here. Very small. Very small. But again, PPLD is showing this one going to... I'm going to ignore this one spike. I'm just going to go right here. It's showing the maximum amplitude count. This event was what? 170 maybe. I'm going to say 170. Let's go to the first one. It's saying this one went to about... I'm going to say 350. And let's say 350 for the first one. So let's go to PLAD. Now this station is on the summit of Mauna Loa. Notice how the two spasmodic tremor events, this one right here and this one right here, look much stronger on the heli quarter than this one right here and this one right here, even though those are the same exact events. Notice that? Same exact events. So, and look at this. No lower frequency ranges. Why is PLAD removing the lower frequencies of these events? We know the lower frequencies are there. But why is PLAD not seeing any of the lower frequencies? The strongest frequencies are around 16 hertz or so. That is very, very strange. And notice again, going up to about 364, almost showing a little bit stronger than PPLD. Almost, just barely. So why does it seem... Not saying it is, but why does it seem to be a little bit stronger at Mauna Loa than near the epicenter at PPLD? Because PPLD is much closer to the epicenter of these events, but again, these events are occurring pretty deep. So I don't know. Maybe it is signaling magma going into Mauna Loa. What do you think? Again, it's only showing mid-range frequencies, actually high frequencies, actually. No lower frequencies at all, which is strange, because even the stations to the north show some lower frequencies. So I think just something's wrong with PLAD in regards to their frequency ranges. Now here's the smaller spasmodic tremor event that occurred. Again, only showing the higher frequencies, not showing any lower frequencies at all. 
This spike, I'm going to ignore this spike, going to about 178. So again, looking like PLAD and Mauna Loa, although it's farther away from the epicenter, is showing these events a little bit stronger. That is very, very odd. So again, this is spasmodic tremor. I am not calling them DLP HFEs anymore. From now on, whenever I refer to spasmodic tremor, I'm referring to these events right here. Very interesting, guys. So, what do you think is causing this? I already know that it's mass magma transport on the Mantapum conduit. I already have talked to prof professionals about this. It's basically unanimous. I mean, there's still a little wiggle room for debate, but it's pretty much unanimous that it is signaling mass magma transport. Because either these events usually seem to get shallower with time. Sometimes they seem to get deeper, but most of the time they seem to get a little bit shallower, showing the magma, breaking through the rock, coming through that mantle plume. But in my opinion, I think it splits off. Kind of like the the capital letter Y. The mantle plume is the one little line, and it splits off to Mauna Loa and the Middle East and Lower East Rift Zones. That is just my opinion. That is just my opinion right now. But why don't we just take a really quick look at deformation for the Mauna Loa Summit and Joka down near the Lower East Rift Zone. So first, let's use Joka down near the Puna Forest Reserve right in the Lower East Rift Zone. Here's going on the estates where the fissures opened up. Sadly, I cannot use these stations. Notice 2009 ended at about 2009-2010. Whoops. Hold on. And there we go. Okay. And then notice this ended at about, what, 2015, 2016? So I can't even use those stations. There's no recent data at all. The most recent data for the closest part of the Lower East Rift Zone is this right here. Joka will use that GPS data and see where this is headed and see how bad uplift it really is. Here we have GPS deformation data for Joka, which is the closest GPS station in the Lower East Rift Zone. And a 12 UNR from straight from the UNR. This is Joka again from... September 5th, 2018, right after the eruptions calmed in Hawaii, all the way to the most recent data for, what is that, for May 23rd, 2019. We see uplift has basically been continuing almost constant, but it, there's, it seemed to have stopped for a little while right here, surprisingly. It seemed to have stopped. A little bit of subsidence did occur, but it does look like it could be heading back up. I am unsure, but I am hoping that it is leveling out. I'm really hoping that it's leveling out. That means there's less magma pouring in. So a little bit less of a chance of a sooner eruption. Sooner than later. Hopefully, eruptions don't start for a long, long time. I'm really hoping they don't. But again, uplift was pretty severe right here. And then kind of leveled out just a little bit. You know, we still got some uplift. And then went down. And then looks like it's heading right back up. So we'll see where this is headed later on. I'll do another video probably in a month just detailing all the recent uh, deformation in Hawaii. Now let's take a look at, let's go back, let's go to Magnet, let's see, okay, now I want to look at the deformation for Mauna Loa Summit. Let's use, let's see right here, MLSP, MLSP, and you can just see from right here, Uplift, oh, by the way, sorry guys, I forgot to state, this is Uplift Subsidence, Uplift Subsidence, just saying. Now look at the vertical chart right here that they give, you can tell Uplift, was pretty extreme right here in 2014 to 2015. Then we saw just kind of normal. Uh, there really is no such thing as normal uplift. But we did pretty much see some normal uplift. And then look at right now, it is starting to spike once again. So let's look at this data for GPS station MLSP. Right on the southern section of Mauna Loa Summit. So here we have GPS deformation data for MLSP and A12 UNR for the Mauna Loa Summit in Hawaii. I'm going to use Delta U, which is shows trended data to show us whether it's going to show uplift or subsidence. And since September 5th, to, uh, excuse me, September 5th, 2018. Jeez, stumbling over my words. So from September 5th, 2018 to May 23rd, 2019, we see uplift continues. We saw a good spike in uplift right here. When was that? Let's see, series point 198. Let's go to 1208, because there's a difference of 10. 208, that's about March, middle of March 2019. So about little, middle of March 2019, when again, we saw more of those spasmodic tremor events. We did see a spike in uplift, and then it went right back down. And now it's heading right back up. So Mauna Loa, so down in the Lower East Rift Zone, near Joka, it seems like uplift could be stopping. It's too early to tell, 
but it is possible swelling is starting to calm down a little bit. Possible. I'm not saying that's for sure. But still keep an eye on that area. However, Mauna Loa doesn't seem to be subsiding at all. It seems to be inflating and inflating and inflating and inflating. Seismic activity does seem to be increasing, and with these spasmodic tremor events, I am starting to think that the majority of the magma is heading into Mauna Loa's reservoir. That is what I am believing. So, my money, it used to be on the Lower East Rift Zone. If my theory is correct that the uplift is ceasing in the Lower East Rift Zone, my money for the next eruption on the Big Island of Hawaii will be Mauna Loa. I am thinking Mauna Loa will be the next volcano to erupt on the Big Island of Hawaii. I don't know when that will happen, but that is what I believe. So, again, uplift subsidence since September 5th, 2018 through May 23rd, 2019. Uplift continues in Mauna Loa. Let's go to latest earthquakes. Anything else crazy happened since I recorded? Nope, doesn't look like it. Nope, let's go to California. Let's check it out real quick. Some swarming down in Nevada, just north of Las Vegas. Clear Volcano Field, which is which houses the largest geothermal pumping operation in the world. In my, I believe it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they're still seeing some swarming as well. Yellowstone is very, very calm today after seeing that swarm yesterday. Very small swarm, but still still occurred go to alaska basically the let's go to the world check this out basically the only seismicity that is really occurring is in california and alaska isn't that weird the pacific plate the ring of fire seems to be very very calm right now which is very very strange so i don't know you let me know what you think in the comment section below hope you guys had a great day anything else crazy happens i will be back with another video so also don't forget to add me on facebook you know my name here on youtube just type my name in on Facebook, find me, add me if you wish. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless. See you later.